Hello and welcome back to the second part of this video. In the previous part, I introduced an analysis method that can help you to get started and to identify areas where UX improvements provide the most impact. In this part of the video, I would like to attract your attention to two things. The flexibility of the method shown and a set of additional attributes that can make your analysis even more precise. Thinking of the flexibility of the analysis, you might have wondered whether you always need to start with the technical analysis. Of course you don't. The great thing about this method is that you can turn it upside down and start off by creating your list using the attributes we looked at in the last video as complementary information. In other words, if you are a member of the LOB organization, you can also start with an initial list that reflects the most popular applications from a business point of view. Alternatively, if you want to start with the applications that your users complain the most about, you could start with a general user satisfaction survey. By the way, while I made a difference between applications and transactions in the last video, I will call them all applications from now on for the sake of simplicity. During your analysis, you are sure to discover other types of information that could be of special interest in your environment. Let me introduce you to some which are often used by customers of mine. User access type. It might be important for you to understand the channel through which your users access their applications. With regard to your list, you could add a column that reflects whether the users mainly access the individual applications through a mobile device, a desktop device, or via browser-based web access. You could also think of three columns if you have cases where multiple access channels have to be supported. User type, user groups and user location. In the first part of this video, I mentioned the importance of understanding your users and their environment. In addition to your observations and surveys, try to gather structured information about who your users are and where they are located. For each application in your list, it can be a valuable insight to know whether it is used by power users who use it every day or occasionally by almost every employee. It can also be helpful to understand whether you can assign your applications to a group of users or to a specific location. This is especially of interest when defining your roadmap later on. Strategically, it is always a good approach to start with a specific group of users. For instance, users in the same location or with a common set of applications. Costs. We haven't talked about costs in this video, but this is an important factor as you can imagine. Wouldn't it be good to have an idea of the related operating costs for the individual applications? or maybe the amount of related support activities over the last few months. Remember, a good user interface and user experience has high impact to the data quality. We have already broached this subject in earlier videos. The related costs could be the main trigger for planning your roadmap. If you don't have information handy to calculate costs, you could also look at the number of support messages data corrections or provide a rating like high, medium, low. The main thing is to find a starting point for your UX improvement project. Now it is up to you. Start your own analysis and identify the most promising areas for improvement for you and your company. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section and stay tuned for other videos coming soon. The easiest way to find our videos and to access various other sources of interesting information is visiting the SAP UX Explorer at sap.com slash UX Explorer.